there's a concept very important in the research that you do, which is the biological carbon pump. Yes. And I actually didn't really know what that was before talking to you. So what is it? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Science in Shorts. We are here with Brittany Levar, who is a master's student in the microbiology program here at ASU. Mm -hmm. And she's working in the Neuer lab, yes. which does research on the biological carbon pump in the ocean. More mm -hmm. on that in a minute. Brittany, thank you so much for being here with us today. Mm -hmm. But before we get started with your research, I would invite you to get one of these jarring questions, as mm -hmm. we call them, okay. which is like a philosophical scientific question. So you can go ahead and All grab right. one of those. And we want to see what you think. In there, we have stuff like what is the importance of science in the society and these types of questions. And we're having scientists tackle Answer. these questions. Okay, can so, I open it? Yeah, you can go ahead and open it Shall and see, see what you get. <laughs> Are we alone in the universe? Are we alone in the universe? What do you think? No. No? <laughs> Absolutely, Absolutely not. Absolutely not? I am a very strong believer that <laughs> there has to be something or someone else out there. Yeah? I mean, technically the universe is like endless. Wow. You know? okay, so yeah, yeah. the chances of there absolutely being nothing else except like rock and dust and stars, In your I, I don't believe it. <laughs> that's, that's not happening. Okay. Yeah. And if that's the case, what kind of life, like how do you picture this life being? Like <laughs> microbial life or complex um, mm -hmm. living systems like us? Well, I think we'll probably find microbial life first, just personally. Um, yeah. Maybe not in our lifetime, but you know, in a generation, in yeah. some generation in the future. Um, it would be really cool if we could find <laughs> a multicellular organism. Um, <laughs> yeah. Holding out hope for that. Yeah. But I'm sure there is like a complex, sentient, multicellular organism somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere out there. Well, that's very interesting. Maybe someday we can have like. Me dating apps with someone in another planet, <laughs> something like that. All right. Well, yesterday I was over at your guys' lab and we recorded footage for uh, Science Protocol, which are the short, uh, the short videos that we make for scientific experiments. Mm -hmm. And I know that you were uh, researching about whether a particular bacterium that you study in your lab forms aggregates or not. We're going to tell our viewers what an aggregate is in a minute. Mm -hmm. But before that, I know that there's a concept very important in the research that you do, which is the biological carbon pump. Yes. And I actually didn't really know what that was before talking to you. So what is it? All right. Global warming and climate change are happening. It's kind of indisputable. We've observed it. We see it. So we're trying to figure out how is carbon sequestered in our, you know, on Earth. Yes. Um, one of the big ways that it's sequestered is like 25% is by like the land and the trees. Okay. And then 25% is taken up by the ocean. Yes. So in the ocean, uh, there is a concept called the um, oceanic carbon pump. Okay. It's created of two sections, the biological and the physical carbon pump. Okay. So the physical carbon pump is pretty much the currents and the waves uptake and kind of absorb this atmospheric carbon and mm. it's through that like motion that um, the atmospheric carbon is removed. Yes. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with any like biologicals. It's not really uh, has anything to do with uh, bacteria or organisms or anything like that. It's just the physical mm -hmm. processes of let's say the waves capturing the carbon in the air yeah. and bring it in, bringing it into the ocean. Yes. Yes. I focus on the biological carbon pump, which I consider a lot more interesting. A <laughs> uh, little bias there. Yeah. And the biological carbon pump is driven by phytoplankton that photosynthetically fixate the atmospheric carbon into particulate organic carbon and dissolved organic carbon. Okay, so thus far, just s simplifying mm -hmm. it for the viewers that are not experts in yeah. this area, we're talking about how carbon gets trapped, let's say, by mm -hmm. the ocean into the water. It yes. can be either through physical systems like the waves mm -hmm. or biological si systems. In those systems, phytoplankton plays a role. Mm -hmm. It captures the carbon and it does stuff with it, yes. right? And it makes it fitting 
for the ecology of the ocean. Yeah. Yes? Definitely. You okay. Can say that. And now, the <laughs> experiment that you were doing yesterday, you were trying to demonstrate if <laughs> uh, Petrichial bacterium. Which, which goes by the name of? It's Marinobacter adherens HP15. Okay, really complex name. <laughs> a particular bacterium yeah. uh, forms aggregates. Why do we care about it and what is an <laughs> aggregate, by the way? Got it. In my case, uh, my research is looking at kind of the formation of marine snow. And marine snow is those particles that are floating in the ocean and if you look at it, it looks like snow oh. in the ocean. Inside the water? Yeah, it's in the water oh. and it floats um, top to bottom, you know, it starts floating towards the floor, which uh -huh. we want to happen yeah. because once that marine snow reaches the ocean floor, it stays there, it gets buried by like other marine snow, other particulates, and that's considering sequestering the carbon. Okay, so these organisms mm -hmm. are getting carbon and creating this marine snow? Marine snow. And it's bringing the carbon all the way down into the depths of the ocean. Yes. And these aggregates have to form, Yes. as far as I understand it, because the weight of these aggregates is what pulls them down into yes. the depths of the ocean. Yeah, so that's the super important part. If the aggregate or the bacterium or the organism is too light or too small, it can't actually float down the water column mm. because those currents keep pushing it up and around and mm -hmm. it just it doesn't have the density to sink okay yeah and so one way for them to get that density is to form uh, aggregates which are part which can be called marine snow okay yes and with your experiment you were just trying to show that this particular bacterium mm -hmm. does that so the thing about these aggregates that are forming is that they're not sterile they're not azenic they're composed of a bunch of different type of bacteria uh, phytoplankton you could have like dirt and sand in there yeah it's a bunch of different things coming together that are trying to form large enough aggregates so that they can fall to the bottom of the ocean super super interesting yeah Brittany thank <laughs> you so much for being here with us today and thank you for everyone that is watching if you want to know more about this experiment that Brittany and I were talking about you can go to our last video where we have our science protocol and it's a brief summary of how the experiment looks like don't forget to subscribe and like uh, this video because that helps a lot Brittany again thank you very much <laughs> and everyone in the science and shorts community we'll see you again for the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.